Hi everyone. So I've come down to this local area of kind of Greenland and public walkway just to try and get some photography and filming of some of our UK wildlife coming into the evening. So hopefully I'll be able to find foxes and deer, hopefully even a barn owl if I'm really lucky. So I will post up somewhere and I'll basically sit and wait and then everyone will be able to see what it's like in terms of wildlife photography. A lot of it is just sitting and waiting. But we will see what we can find. I hope you enjoy the video and welcome to Naturescope. So these are the sorts of the areas that you're looking for. Looking for quite brushy, some cases overgrown places of, of landscape with also a kind of a wide view that will give you a, a great vantage point and also will make the animals nice and comfortable because they've got a lot of area to go as well. They've got a lot of places to hide. Comfortable footwear. So I've got my boots on and also long trousers are really, really sensible for this sort of stuff. So you can see here, so if I just pass through that gate there, I've got this pathway that kind of winds all the way up, which gives me that kind of open space that I'm looking for. And also pathways are areas of leaf, least resistance. So animals do tend to either make their own pathways or follow existing pathways that other animals have made. And so if you just sit just off the side of that and just be dead quiet, sometimes, not all the time, animals will come by just on their, their daily forage. Uh, there's things moving over in the distance, but a lot of them seem to be pigeons or plants moving in the wind. So we'll head up there. Somewhere along here we'll probably post up and um, see what we can find. So you can see this path here that I'm following. So it is the public footpath that I am, am following. But again, like I said, animals will use these pathways. Um, so it's just a case of following the pathway, keeping quiet, being really slow and hoping that something will stumble upon your path. I did forget to mention whenever you're coming into an area like this, there's tall grass. You're going to be sitting down wearing long trousers, as I did say, mainly because tall grass is the home of the tick. They hold on to the tall parts of the grass here and just as an animal or yourself walks past, they, as you brush past a piece of grass, the tick latches onto you and then crawls up clothing and goes into access. So generally, tuck your trousers into your shoes. What I've done, I've tucked my socks into my trousers as well, just to prevent any ticks as I'm moving through the grass. And then when I sit down, I put my jacket on and my coat on. And there we go. An amazing fallow deer, look at that. Apologize for the f shakiness. Just following the path. And there he goes. <laughs> there we go. How cool is that? So I'm just on the pathway where he was. He was following the same path where I was completely behind him. Spooked him there at the last moment, but I was just, I was just peeking his head out a minute ago. So I'm going to put my jacket on, just stay in this long grass for a bit longer, and see if he comes out again. Chances are that second time when I spooked him, he's probably gone further into the into the brush. You can still hear him walking around. So I've just got to make him feel comfortable.
And there you go. Don't know, he was just in there in that gap. You can see the pathway he made as he ran up. And then I was just sat just there. I don't know if you can see the, uh, the squash patch just off the side there. But that's how close I got. You were just really quiet and still. The animals will come to you. There's no need to go to them. So just a bit of etiquette here. We've come through that field now. And now I'm making sure every gate that I go through is locked because as you can see we're about to go into a field where there are animals, there are horses. So if you ever go walking, the etiquette is that you make sure that every single gate is locked. If it says do not enter, do not enter. If it is a public footpath, you keep to the public path. So as we can see there is a path that is running all the way up here. So I'm going to keep to that path. The horses approach me, the horses approach me. I do my best to not interact with the horses. I'm just going to try and walk past nicely. Let them know that I'm there, just so that they don't get spooked. So you can see they're crossing the path now. Give them the space that they need. If I need to, I can go around them. But generally, I'll try and keep to that path. I'm just going to keep to this path as much as we can. Give the horses the much respect. You can see they can hear me going. It's having a look now. It's realizing someone's in its field. So we're just going to keep to the path. Nice and calm. I'm going to stay away from the back of the horse as much as I can. Look at these beautiful, gorgeous creatures. Hello. Hello. Gonna walk around you. Okay, just gonna walk around you. Hello. Hello, darling. Hello. Okay, I'm not engaging with it. I know it will probably be very interesting, but I want it to know that I don't have any food. I'm not an interest. The other one now as well. Okay, see, went around it nice and calmly. It's now left me alone. The other one's gonna come and say hello. Who's this? Who's coming up now? But just gonna, as you can see, walk around there nice and calmly. Hello. Hello. She's gonna give me a sniff. She's gonna follow me. <laughs> Wondering who I am. And I'm gonna continue walking to this public footway. Again, we're gonna gun through here where the horses can't come to us going to go through the gate. Hello sweetheart. Hello. And again, making sure the gate is chained and locked so the horses stay nice and safe and secure. Here we go. <laughs> and you hope you have to find water somehow. We've got three ducks there. So we've got the male ones, they're the drakes. They've got that lovely gorgeous green sheen on their head. We've got the female duck who is in that brown who's just swimming off, uh, swimming off now. Uh, so they're mallards, they're mallard ducks, and but the males themselves they're called drakes. Yeah, nice little thing, nice little pond for them to to nest in. Not really one that you'd probably want to go pond dipping in or swimming in anyway. <laughs> but again, still things like this. You can see that there are weeds, there are insects, there are bugs, there'll be invertebrates that will then feed things such as frogs and newts. You may even find fish in here, so yeah, smaller fish like sticklebacks, minnows uh, in these small ponds. There we have We have our fox. Look at that. Absolutely incredible. Just gonna stop here and see if I can get some shots. So I'm lying down now in the field, uh, as you can see. And um, it ran off into the hedgerow. I tried to get a little bit closer, but only moved a couple of steps before it ran off. Um, I was on the other end of the field to, to the fox. And I've got a really powerful lens, it's about 600 to 150 millimeters. Um, it's the width that can go, so 600 is the furthest. But I'll stay here and I'll see if it comes back. Again, it's a waiting game with wildlife photography. You could literally be here for hours, or if, like me, if you're really lucky, um, be here for, for only a couple of hours and you get to see these amazing things. 
so I'll stay here for a bit if it doesn't come soon I'll just push up into the next field see if there's anything else there and then I'll probably call it a day and head back but you never know what you find on the head back so even when you're heading back don't turn off your camera don't say that's it something will come along we always say when the camera is off that's when something will come along so I'll stay here a bit longer see if it comes back if not we'll see what else we can find but that was so cool utterly amazing how cool is that that's exactly who I am and that I'm here out to find exactly what I want. All I need now is an owl. Amazing. Still quite far away. Still give it the distance so I'll see if I can get a little closer. That's amazing. <laughs> really, really cool. Again, this is what I mean by wildlife photography is a lot of sitting, walking from one spot to the other and then sitting down, but the results are amazing, they really are. So, we'll see what happens. There you go. Fascinating animals. <laughs> Interested in about that peacock. I'm interested about that peacock. I think I've been spotted. How about that guys? Fantastic. I hope you all really enjoyed my outing here in the countryside of Essex. It has been an amazing evening. And it just goes to show that all you have to do is step outside, just find a doesn't have to be large, it could be a small green area 
where you are locally, and there will be wildlife there. Every green space will have wildlife, whether it be small or large, and if they usually are small ones, things, the larger things are to follow. Just get out there and explore. These areas seriously need to be protected. You've just seen today what I've seen. And that will be across the countryside everywhere. Foxes are now moving into urban areas where uh, the natural habitats are being destroyed. And so they're now moving into urban areas. And so the more green spaces we can protect, the more these amazing creatures will stay around for generations to follow. But I hope you've enjoyed and I hope I've given you some tips for you wanting to get out there and actually explore yourself and take some photos yourself. I'll put the photos up at the end that I've spoken, uh, or taken today, um, and I really hope you've enjoyed the video. But thanks so much. This has been Nature Scope. I've been Kevin. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.